Hey, it's Natalia Aileen. Welcome back to the channel. I want to share my personal story being diagnosed with PCOS, PMDD, and ADHD over the last year. I'm hoping that this will support you if you're on your own health journey. Maybe you're thinking that you have one of those three conditions. I probably will touch on some more than others, but this I think will give people insight into some of the ways my burnout recovery journey has been a little complicated by health diagnoses that I have not been paying attention to. Okay, two disclaimers I wanna jump right into right away. The first one is I'm not a doctor. I read a lot about these conditions. I'm spending a lot of time thinking about my own personal experience of them, but I don't have any degrees related to medicine or biology or anything like that. I'm not a doctor. Please don't take what I say as medical advice. Go get your own medical advice from an actual doctor if you feel like you need it. Otherwise, I hope my story is more inspiring or interesting or illuminating for you. And that's what it's here to do, not offer medical advice. My second disclaimer is that inherently these conditions that I'm about to talk about, they involve at least two of them, involve menstrual cycles. So if you're not a fan of talking about menstrual cycles, I don't know, it's a taboo topic for some strange reason. Some people don't like it. If you're one of those people, no problem. This video just probably isn't for you. Let's jump into my story where I share how, even though I'm in my 30s and I've been living a while, I didn't know that I had PCOS, PMDD, or ADHD. And in the last year, I burnt out, burnt out, but realized now that a large part of that burnout was because I was living with unmanaged conditions that can get in the way of performing at your best. So let's start with PCOS. In order to think about PCOS, um, I should explain what it is, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is a condition that affects a lot of people who menstruate, and it's something I suspected I had for a long time, but doctors would be really strange about it because apparently, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I will tell you what I've been told. <laughs> apparently you're supposed to have two out of three conditions in order to be considered someone with PCOS. So you have to have either irregular periods, high testosterone, and or ovarian cysts. For me, I've never had ovarian cysts, and my testosterone levels have always come back within range, but ever since I could remember, I've had irregular periods. And it was only recently, in the last year, that I took a test with a hormone panel that included DHEA sulfate, which is apparently an androgen, just like testosterone, and my DHEA was extremely elevated for a woman and for a woman of my age. So that is how I got diagnosed officially with PCOS, even though I've had irregular periods forever, and even though at this point I'm also experiencing pretty significant insulin resistance and high A1C, high blood sugar levels, and People were looking at me like, what is going on with you? You work out, you do all this stuff. Anyway, PCOS can do that to you. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, it has a lot of uh, different symptoms that come about because of the irregular periods and the, and the high, andro andro high androgen hormones and for me, everybody would always test testosterone, but they wouldn't test any other androgen hormones. So this was the first time that someone was like, absolutely, you have this, and absolutely, it's what's causing your insulin resistance and the prediabetes markers that I now have. So that was new news that came about just in the last few months. And as I was slowing down to try to take some burnout recovery time, the second thing that came out that I had no idea I had, but started suspecting maybe a few months ago, uh, but it's huge in my life, huge. I 
feel like I'm imitating someone, but I'm not trying to. <laughs> PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It is a very real disorder that is considered to be like PMS, premenstrual syndrome, which you've probably heard of, how people before they get their periods are like moody and crampy and uh, hard to be around. There's all these stereotypes about PMS. Setting those aside, PMDD is considered a next level version of PMS where physical and mental health symptoms come about because of high sensitivity to hormone fluctuations during a menstrual cycle. And typically for someone with a regular cycle, premenstrual dysphoric disorder symptoms show up when that person is in the two weeks before their period. Now, I say that kind of smiling because for me, I had a regular period and I could never really tell when this was going to happen, but I would have for weeks at a time, physical and mental health symptoms that would come about and now I know that it's because I'm highly sensitive to hormonal fluctuations. And again, the PCOS and the irregular periods really complicated that. But, <laughs> cause I just couldn't tell when it was gonna happen, which is so much fun. But I had definitely a very pronounced version of PMDD that came about because I, was not regulating my hormones as well as I used to. Okay, so let me quickly explain this. For me, it was actually a blessing that I had PCOS because it was something that very early on, my doctors tried to treat. And very early on, as in when I was 14 or 15 years old, my doctors put me on birth control. And apparently that's what you do, you put people who are irregular in their menstrual cycles on birth control, it's very common. And so I was 14 or 15 years old and I was put immediately on birth control and I actually responded really well to it. I felt like I had higher energy, I felt like I could concentrate better, I felt like I was um, just feeling a lot more like myself on birth control. I remember feeling that right away and staying on birth control and sometimes not even taking any breaks from birth control. So taking it continuously, not taking that week off that some of us are familiar with usually comes with birth control to simulate a period. I was on birth control 24 seven until in my late twenties, I decided to try life without birth control to get regular again or ever, like for the first time and to experience what it's like to regulate my periods naturally. Now, one thing you'll note, and maybe this resonates with you, is that a lot of people say PMDD for them gets worse or shows up, it seems, for the first time after a major hormonal shift. Some people say that after they have their first child, they suddenly seem to experience really, really, really difficult premenstrual symptoms that begin to affect their life, which then becomes PMDD as opposed to just PMS. For me, it was after the point I decided to get off of birth control for an indefinite amount of time that I started to experience a bunch of PMDD symptoms, but because I was having a regular period off of the birth control, I didn't know to connect those symptoms to the fact that I had stopped doing or taking birth control. When I was taking birth control, I was keeping my hormone levels at a particular level and keeping them constant. That's what birth control does. It just is a constant pump of, of hormones. And that steady consistency meant that my sensitivity to hormone fluctuations just never really demonstrated itself. Off of it, my body was trying to do its natural thing on an irregular cycle and I was feeling it. So when I stopped taking birth control in 2020, which was four years ago now, right? 
It took some time, but slowly I started experiencing really intense metabolic physical symptoms. Constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloat, flatulence, gas like both ends. And I was struggling mightily to function because it would hurt so badly. I would also get headaches regularly. And all of those things would happen, it seemed, at times that I couldn't predict. And it would be difficult to do work or to go places when those symptoms were at their extreme. On top of that, I started to experience anxiety, which is the mental health side, which is something I had never experienced before then. Now, these symptoms felt like they got progressively worse over time. So much so that on top of that, I've read that insulin resistance can also increase the experience of PMDD symptoms. So the PCOS was not helping the PMDD. And I didn't realize I had ADHD as well. So last year I pursued a diagnosis. I was evaluated and was diagnosed with ADHD, attention deficit dis hyperactivity disorder. And ADHD looks different ways in different people. For me, I had recognized that there were instances where I would be not able to hold a lot of information in my head. I would forget things regularly or at certain times, but it was not something that was very loud, very present. I had spent a lot of time in my professional career just pushing, 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 doing what I needed to do, and momentum was my best friend. If I had momentum, I was rolling. If I had a lot of free time, it felt like I didn't know where to, what to even do, and I would feel paralyzed. But I never had a lot of time. I was jam-packed with things to do all the time. And it was when I started experiencing PCOS, PMDD, and now I can't really work because I'm feeling so awful that then those symptoms started to become more apparent to me. And on top of that, they seem to be stronger. I, I, my, my ability to focus started waning. I was struggling with prioritizing or doing the things that I knew I needed to do. And for me, that was really jarring because here I am trying to push through and do the things that I've committed to doing despite these symptoms that I'm not really paying attention to, but that I know are kind of there, that I now think are PMDD and PCOS, but was before kind of like, ah, let's try to forget they're there. And now I can't even do the work because I'm so distracted. My head is all over the place. And in some instances, the distraction was the symptoms I was feeling, but I realize now that ADHD made it harder for me to not put my attention in places that I didn't want that attention to go. So that's my story. Underneath my burnout are three conditions that I am now in the process of learning how to manage as an adult. As an adult who has operated a certain way and is now trying to shift and change the way she operates to navigate this new reality. And it's been a little frustrating, not gonna lie, it has been frustrating. At the same time, it's been interesting to lean into this chapter and to know, hey, you've been what they call white knuckling this for a while meaning you've been kind of just pushing through all of this without taking the time to understand it or taking the time to understand how best to manage it. It's unmanaged. All of it has been unmanaged. And I feel proud of how far I've come and now interested in uh, uh, learning, learning these conditions and asking for help from professionals who can support me, getting the medication support that I might need, getting the supplement support that I might need, 
And actually, I, I'm making this sound really simple, but for the last four years, I've been talking to a lot of doctors about this and not gotten that many answers. But I'm finally at a place where all of the pieces have come together and this picture makes sense. So in addition to some of the things I've already done, like I work out very regularly. I have a very, very strong diet, good diet, a nutritious diet. I uh, spend a lot of time now doing meditation and journaling and all of those things. In addition to that and the supplements that I have been taking because PCOS and PMDD do make it difficult to absorb a lot of vitamins and that was one of the first things I realized about these conditions that I was not getting a lot of nutrients so I do take supplements but in addition to the supplements the lifestyle habits I am now excited to also truly get hands-on in managing these three conditions and maybe over the course of the videos that I film moving forward I'll touch on some of that but ultimately I wanted to share this because sometimes it's easy to feel alone in your health journey you also might have PCOS PMDD or ADHD and I just wanted to share so that you feel less alone and so that we can navigate at least some of this together all right I'll see you in the next video